Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me for the second episode of the DC3 build. In the last episode, we have built the fuselage framework and the central part of the wing. Located inside the wing is a wood and metal structure that will help transfer loads between the various parts of the airplane. If you have not seen the last episode, I recommend you take a look at it now. It will give you a better picture of what's going on. So, let's start this video off by finishing the wings. I have cut out various cross sections of the wing out of balsa wood or the insulation board. Next, I have marked the positions of the aluminium supports and drilled the appropriate holes. Now it was time to start measuring out the wings. This is always a bit tricky, because everything is at an awkward angle. When I was happy how everything fit together, I glued the aluminium pipes into place. Next, I have transferred all the dimensions to another piece of foam board. This will form our second wing. Finally, I have installed a carbon fiber tube that would further support the wingtips. Now, it would also be a good time to install the aileron servos, however, they have not arrived yet so we will have to deal with this later. Using hot glue, I have sealed both of the wings shut. Final adjustments included cutting a trailing edge and the root of the wing to match the center section. Now it was time to give the wingtips their correct shape. When laminating the fuselage, I will also round off and laminate the wingtips, but this will have to wait till later. Next on the list are the ailerons. These control surfaces will be hooked up to remote control servos and will allow us to maneuver the airplane. Once the ailerons were cut out, they were covered in transparent tape to protect the fragile trailing edge. The ailerons will be attached to the top skin I therefore had to angle the connecting surface to allow for downward deflection. This was done by taping two rulers to the top and bottom skin and using them as a guide for the knife. Now a hinge was created using more tape. I prefer this over the small plastic hinges as this creates a smooth surface. Here is a close-up of the finished aileron. And this is our DC-3 with the wings attached. Now it's finally time to start covering the fuselage. I started off by cutting 2-3cm to three centimeter stripes. These were bent into the correct shape and glued to the skeleton. Each time I make a new model, I aim to improve something. This time, I will try to laminate the fuselage with fiberglass and epoxy resin. My plan is to remove the plastic film from the foam once the fuselage is complete, 
then sand everything to a smooth surface and apply the laminate. By doing this, I will obtain a much smoother surface. This will help the aesthetics and the aerodynamics of the airplane. Of course, this will come at a cost of increasing the weight. The design process of an airplane is full of compromises like this. Let's take a break from building the fuselage and check out the newly arrived servos. These servos will allow us to control the airplane. Let's give them a test to see if they work properly. Everything works fine, let's install the servos on the ailerons. First, I have cut an opening into the wing. And then came the challenge of feeding the servo cable. This was done using a wire and some tape. Next, I have created servo arms out of a sheet of wood. The servo arm and the servo were glued into place using hot glue. Finally, I installed a pushrod made from a wire. The ailerons are now complete and functioning. So, let's continue with the endless task of completing the fuselage. Creating the nose section is the most challenging because of all of the curves. However, it is also the most rewarding as it brings the whole model to life. Every piece has to be carefully measured, then adjusted, then adjusted again, then adjusted a few more times before it can be glued into its position. Can you guess what this piece is? The cockpit windows. If you enjoy videos like this, consider subscribing. There will be plenty of episodes coming in the future. Also, let me know in the comment section what livery we should paint this aircraft when it's finished. The nose of the airplane is almost complete. I've decided to make the tip in a slightly different way. I have glued several pieces of foam together to form a block out of which the tip will be carved. This way is far easier and yields better results than trying to attach pieces of foam to the skeleton. Once the shape was carved, the surface was smoothed out with a file. And here it is. The nose of the aircraft is finished, at least for now. In a later video, we will laminate the whole fuselage and give it a beautiful paint job. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.